Hey guys, Mr. Stevens, uh, back here again with you guys. Uh, this should be on around Wednesday, um, that you guys are seeing this. Um, I'm gonna be handling Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday of this week. Um, so we're going to keep going with our ecology section, but we're going to add a little bit more stuff to it on what we already know. So we're still in ecology. We're just going to add a few more topics to what we already understand. They're, they're still all linked together, but we're going to talk about some new stuff. And the first thing we're going to talk about today is soil erosion. Um, right here on this first slide, we've got a little video. Um, it deals with a uh, serious issue that comes about as a result of soil erosion. Um, I won't spoil it, but the video itself shows something that's kind of, I guess, scary in a way, because not scary as in like a horror movie, but scary like how, about how unpredictable and powerful nature can be um, as a result of factors like um, soil erosion becoming a serious issue. So give that a watch, it's not very long, and then we can move forward. So this is our standard for what we're going to be starting here. Um, 7.9, engage an argument to defend the effectiveness of a design solution that maintains biodiversity and ecosystem services. For example, using scientific economic and social considerations regarding purifying water, recycling nutrients, and preventing soil erosion. So basically what that says is we are going to be looking at the science, the business side, and like human and social interactions regarding um, filtering and purifying water, um, recycling, and soil erosion. So for today, we're going to start with soil erosion, and we're going to talk a little bit about how important it is and ways that we can work to prevent soil erosion. And then um, Thursday and Friday, we're going to talk about uh, water purification, filtration, and recycling. And, but let's not worry about that right now. We'll get to those when we get to them. So let's go forward with some soil erosion for right now. So here's our objectives for what we're going to be doing this with this unit. Um, we're going to identify solutions that can lead to an improvement or maintain the status of biodiversity in an ecosystem. Um, a couple of weeks ago when I handled the, the full week with you guys on uh, Wednesday, uh, we talked about biodiversity. That um, may have been you guys' first uh, real um, introduction to biodiversity, but I'm sure you guys all remember what it means. Um, bio, you know, meaning life, and diversity meaning a variety of things. So biodiversity is a variety of living things. Um, so that's basically saying that we're going to learn about ways that we can help biodiversity get stronger or we can at least help it stay where it is. And you know, an ecosystem, you guys all remember that, that one's easy, that's the, um, the combination of the efforts of the biotic, which are living things, and the abiotic, which are non-living things. It's how they work together and interact and that is what culminates in making a ecosystem. So we are also going to identify ways that human activity harms biodiversity and leads to environmental concerns like soil erosion and ecosystem degradation. Um, you guys are all aware there are a lot of things that we do that harms nature, you know, um, deforestation, um, too much agriculture, um, you know, when we have farms that just keep expanding and expanding and they've got cows and all these other things, they've got to have places to eat for those cows to eat and to live. So we just, you know, we cut down trees, we, you know, build malls and 
uh, car lots and all kinds of things that harm the ecosystems and biodiversity. And as a result, those things, they increase things like soil erosion, which is just another thing that leads to ecosystem degradation, which is just the lowering of the quality of the ecosystem. Uh, and finally, how biologists use biodiversity as a form of measurement for the Earth's health. Um, biodiversity often gets used as a a measurement tool. So like the higher the biodiversity of an area is, more often it's considered to be a healthier and richer environment. Um, on the flip side of that, if the biodiversity of an area is considered to be very low, so like you don't have a lot of species in that area, you don't have a lot of um, plants or animals interacting and doing stuff, and that area is often considered to be a little bit less healthy. It's not like in a dangerous way or anything, because you know up in like the Arctic, there's not a whole lot up there. But that doesn't mean that it's terribly unhealthy or a bad place. It's very specific in what it needs and what it does. So it it's not a tool of like the entirety of the Earth measured all at once. We kind of like to break it down into specific areas. But we do use it as a tool to measure how healthy an ecosystem is. So how is soil eroded? What natural forces lead to soil being eroded and removed from its original location? So, last week with Miss Cunningham, we learned about, or it may have been the week before, but it's been recent. So, we learned about succession, you know, primary succession and secondary succession. So, primary succession, we said that a big example of that was a volcano. So Mount St. Helens, for example, when it erupted, all of that ash and lava and smoke, it killed everything in a very large diameter around that volcano. So it made the soil completely useless. Like it was no longer there. It was burned away. It was pushed away. It was just not able to support life anymore. And then we have secondary succession. That would be like um, a tornado was a popular example for that one. And tornadoes are often accompanied by, uh, of course, you know, heavy winds like hundred mile per hundred mile per hour winds, and um, a lot of rain. Um, you know, we're pretty familiar with tornadoes down here, unfortunately, and. That would be an example of secondary succession. You know, it can knock down trees, it can displace animals, but it can also lead to soil erosion. So if there's an area that's not protected well against soil erosion, all that heavy rain and those really strong winds can push soil away from where it's supposed to be. So, natural disasters like hurricanes, tornadoes, and floods can all lead to loss of soil via wind and rain. So, what can happen as a result of soil erosion? So, what do you guys think would happen if all the, the topsoil, for example, where we grow our, our vegetables and our flowers and, you know, the stuff that herbivores eat... What do you think would happen if all of that went away? So, a loss of soil nutrition. Um, if you even if you did have soil to plant, you know, vegetables there, if there's not enough nutrients in the soil, they're not going to grow up and be very healthy. They they might be small or shriveled up, or they may just not even grow at all. Um, a lack of plant life. Um, Grass won't grow, vegetables won't grow, trees won't grow, and an increased risk of flooding. Um, 
the demonstration we're going to do later, or the, the video of it, you'll be able to tell how important plants and their roots are and how important they are to controlling um, soil erosion and helping reduce flooding. Uh, people don't give a lot of credit to plants, but they do a lot more than, you know, smell nice and look, make our houses look prettier. They do a lot for the ecosystems. And finally, do you think humans can be a cause of soil erosion? How so? So do you think that anything that we do could lead to soil erosion? Um, there's probably a lot of things, you know, because we're probably the primary cause of degrading the health of ecosystems. So do you think there's anything that we can specifically do that leads to soil erosion? Um, things like construction, agriculture, um, raising livestock, and mining are all big concerns that can lead to soil erosion. Say, you know, if we want to build a new mall somewhere, we have to get rid of all of the plant life in that area, and we have to dig a foundation, and so we're getting rid of some of the um, natural protection against flooding and um, soil erosion. Um, agriculture and raising livestock kind of go hand in hand. If you have a big farm with a lot of horses and sheep and cows and, you know, a variety of animals that eat grass or um, plant life, they will eat all that grass. And when they're eating it, they're pulling it up by their, they're biting it, they're pulling it up by the roots sometimes. And they're, you know, they're causing the soil to not be as strong and be able to resist flooding. Uh, and mining, of course, you know, mining is a very big concern, whether it's mining that goes underground, you're weakening the foundations of the, the soil that's further up, or if you're just mining at a surface level. If you're mining at a surface level, you're basically just clearing out an entire stretch of land to where there's nothing but hard dirt there where you're digging for minerals or whatever metals you're looking for. So let's let's go forward a little bit. <clears throat> so weathering is something you guys have probably heard about and maybe around the fifth grade or sixth grade or maybe a little bit before that. And erosion and weathering often get um, mixed up. So like it says here, erosion versus weathering. Erosion refers to the displacement of solids such as water, wind, and ice. So erosion is when something is moved. Displacement means you're taking something from one area and you're putting it somewhere else. So that means we're moving the soil away from where it was originally supposed to be. Now weathering. Weathering refers to the decomposition of soils and their minerals and rocks through direct contact with the Earth's atmosphere. So weathering is like how those rock formations out west, they get, you know, beaten down over time with rain and wind and things like that to make those weird and really interesting looking formations, kind of like that picture there. The the process of weathering won't really push the rocks and their broken down minerals and materials away. They'll still be there. They may be, you know, broken apart into sand or pebbles, but they'll still be in that general area or even in still in that area. And it can lead to weird looking formations like that one on that picture there. So it's just, it says decomposition. That means it's breaking it down. It's not really moving it away somewhere. It's just breaking it down over time. Whereas displacement with erosion, it's taking it from its original area and moving it somewhere else. <clears throat> 